Okay, so today I want to talk about this display, which is a Pimoroni 11x7 LED matrix display. And if you are guessing that this is somehow related to my previous video, you are completely right. So the last time I've created a gear indicator for manual transmission cars, and now I'm exploring the options as to which display I can put inside the shifter knob. And as you can see, this display is almost a perfect size. And not just that, it's also very bright, and unlike other LED matrix displays, you can set the brightness of each individual pixel. By the way, I'm not even running this display on the full brightness at this point, it's like the half of the brightness and it's super bright. So today I will show you how you can use this display together with the Arduino Uno, and how to show those nice animations of those individual images of those individual gears appearing and disappearing. And hopefully this will give you some ideas how you can use this display in your own projects. Before I start, let me talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is PCBWA, because sooner or later if you are playing with electronics, you might need custom PCB, and if you use the link down in the description, you can get 10 PCBs for free only paying for shipping, and if you don't need PCBs, you might need 3D printing, CNC machining, or maybe other types of manufacturing, well, in that case PCB has you covered, they offer all of those services for a good price. So thank you PCBWA, and let's get back to our project. So again, this is the LED matrix display from Pimoroni. It has 11 x 7, meaning 77 LEDs. As you've already noticed, those are in white color. And on the back of the PCB, you will find this chip, which is responsible for lighting up those LEDs. This is the IS31FL3731 chip. And although Pimoroni says that you can use this with Arduino, unfortunately, they don't provide any code. Thankfully, there is an Arduino library from Adafruit. It's for a different module, but using the same chip. And actually, maybe we can start with the Adafruit module first to see if the library works. The Adafruit module is made from two pieces, the actual LED matrix and then the driver board. And you should solder those two together like this to create a nice sandwich. Since there is nothing on the top of this PCB and nothing on the back of this PCB, but I've soldered the female header pins on this driver board instead, and this way I can switch between different LED PCBs, because you can get those in a few different colors, and I do have those in a few different colors. Adafruit has a nice documentation, but it's not that much needed for the connection, because this chip uses the i square c connection, which means that the VCC and the ground will go to 5 volts and ground, and then the SDA, the serial data, will go to pin A4 on the Arduino Uno, and the SCL, the serial clock, will go to pin A5 on the Arduino Uno. And with everything connected, we can jump to the Arduino IDE, and in here we need to install the library. The chip's name is IS31FL3731, and thankfully the library name is the same from Adafruit. I will click the install button, and then we can jump to file, examples, locate the library name, and open for example the Swirl demo. We don't need to make any changes in here, so just select the Arduino Uno, and click the upload button. And after uploading the sketch, we should see a very nice fading animations of those LEDs. Again, I have multiple boards, the one with blue LEDs, also a board with yellow LEDs, green LEDs, and also white LEDs. I believe I have one more board, this one is with red LEDs. I really like this one, it reminds me of this chaser light effect from Knight Rider. Anyway, let's get back to our project. The Adafruit board works and it looks great, and I'm sure I will use it for my future projects, but for now I want to use this Pimoroni board. And since it uses the same chip and the same i square c connection, I wonder what happens if I just connect this board to the Arduino Uno. And the answer is nothing happens, unfortunately. And that's because this board uses a different i square c address. On the back of the PCB, you can see that if we don't cut this trace, the address will be 0x75, and if we do cut this trace, the address will be 0x77. On the Adafruit board, it's a little bit more complicated. If we solder those individual pads, we can switch between addresses 75, 6 or 77, but the default i square c address is not listed on the board, and we have to open the documentation to find out that the default i square c address is 0x74, which means that we need to adjust the sketch slightly, and when we call the LED matrix.begin function, we need to provide the i square c address being the 0x75 for our Pimoroni board, and then upload it to the Arduino board again. And now we see the same animation on this smaller display. Now since the Adafruit has 16x9 LEDs and Pimoroni only has 11x7 LEDs, we need to find out what are the X and Y positions of those individual LEDs. 
For that, let's adjust our sketch slightly. I probably don't need this loop, but I will keep the loop for the X and the Y, but I'll add the brackets. For example, like that, and this will go over every single pixel. And I will just light up the pixel by setting the value to, for example, 60, and then wait a little bit longer, for example, 2 seconds. And before I wait, I will print the X and Y value. So I'll just say that the X position will be the variable X, and then do the same thing for the Y position. And maybe if I want, I can also turn off all the other pixels by calling LED matrix that clear function and then upload this sketch to the Arduino Uno. And after this is uploaded, I will open the serial monitor by clicking this icon. Make sure to set the correct speed, which is set to 9600 bouts. And you see we have the X and Y position for the currently lit pixel, which means that all that's left to do is to take the pen and paper and capture those positions. And since I've already done this work, here is what I found. On the left side is the Adafruit board, on the right side is the Pimoroni board. Again, the Adafruit is 16 by 9 and the Pimoroni is 7 by 11. And I found out that the first section is occupying a similar space. But there is also the bottom half of the Pimoroni display. And that's placed on the 16 by 9 canvas like this. So as a first step, let's create a custom image sized 7 by 11 pixels. And let's try to display it properly on the Pimoroni display using these guidelines. Inside our sketch, let's create a new byte array and call this canvas 7 times 11 pixels. And let's draw some image, for example, a checkerboard pattern. So the pixel will be off or on, but maybe instead of 255, I will only go up to 60. So off and on and off and on and off. So those are seven values for one line. And then it will be 60, 0, 60, 0, 60, 0, 60. That will be the second line. Line number 3 and 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and finally light 11. So we should have 77 entries. Inside our main loop, I will borrow this code to go over every single pixel, but I delete most of the stuff. And for the first section, I only want to go for the x between 0 and 7, and the y between 0 and 6. And then I want to set the pixel based on the value from our canvas 7 times 11 pixels, where the position will be based on the x and y, so y times 7 plus x but then we need a similar loop for the second section and this time the x will go between 8 and 15 and the y will only go between 0 and 5. We need to change the index accordingly meaning first offset it from the first section so 7 times 6 is the first section so 7 times 6 plus our new index the y times 7 should stay the same but the x position is now offset so it will be x minus 8 and this should be hopefully the correct index so let's try to upload it to the Arduino. And since we see a checkerboard pattern on the display, our sketch is probably correct. Before I create a custom picture, I want to somehow simulate this display. Because I don't want to upload a new sketch to the Arduino with every single change, I want to have some kind of real-time feedback, I want to immediately see my changes. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I'm using Wokwi quite a lot, and Wokwi is a free online Arduino emulator that supports the Arduino Uno, and a lot of different components. Unfortunately, the Pimoroni display is not there, and while we can use the LED dot matrix display, this one doesn't support grayscale pixels. But there is an LED that does support grayscale, and actually every other color, and that's this NeoPixel LED, so we just need to have 77 of those and then connect everything together, and actually we don't even have to do that. Because there is a special component called a NeoPixel Canvas, which unfortunately you cannot access from this plus icon, so the NeoPixel Canvas is not there, but I can go to the diagram.json file and just copy this NeoPixel Canvas and paste it in our sketch. So inside our diagram.json file I will just paste the NeoPixel Canvas, just like that, and try to locate it, it's down there. I don't need this NeoPixel, but I need to change the size to have only 7 rows and 11 columns. Then I will move it next to the Arduino Uno and try to find the connectors which are on the left side. So the D out we don't need, but the VDD should be connected to 5 volts. The VSS should be connected to ground. And finally the data in should be connected to any digital pin. I will use the pin number 6. And that's because I've used the pin number 6 in my previous video for NeoPixel rings, which looks something like this. I was using the rotor encoder to animate the pixels on the NeoPixel rings. And now I want to merge everything together meaning the code from this sketch to drive the NeoPixel ring, and of course the code from this Arduino sketch to drive the Pimoroni display. And let's actually start with that, so I'll copy the code in the clipboard, and paste this into our sketch. We need to include the library, so go to the library manager, click the plus icon and type in this name, and select the library, then go back to the sketch. 
and from the NeoPixel ring sketch, I will copy the NeoPixel library. So I'll just copy the library up here. I will also copy the defines for the number of pixels and the pin used for the NeoPixel. The pin number is the same, but now we have 77 NeoPixels. And of course, copy the initialization for this NeoPixel. So just copy and paste it up here. That's the initialization for the NeoPixel. And then we need to start the NeoPixel by calling the NeoPixel.begin inside our setup function. So up here, I will call the NeoPixel.begin. And then inside our main loop, we will first clear all the pixels. So NeoPixel.clear. Then we will draw it using the set pixel color. So just copy this piece of code into our sketch as well. And finally, we want to show it by calling the NeoPixel.show function. Now we don't want to set only one pixel, but we want to set all the 77 pixels. So I'll just copy the loop, change the loop variable to pixel. So going from zero all the way to 77 while increasing the value of pixel. We want to set the pixel color based on our canvas. So the canvas seven by 11 pixels and the index will be pixel, but we need to have this three times because it will be for red, green and blue channels. So the red, green and blue channels are all the same for the grayscale output. And then we of course need to include this NeoPixel library in our sketch. So go to library manager and edit this NeoPixel library. And then we can restart the simulation. And we don't see anything on the NeoPixel canvas, but we do some message down here saying the IS31 not found. And if I look into the setup function, we are trying to connect to the Pimoroni display. And if it doesn't happen, we will end up in the infinite loop. But obviously there is no Pimoroni display present in this simulation. So I'll just comment out this file function and just not worry that we are not connecting to the Pimoroni display and restart the simulation one more time. And after a few seconds, we should finally see the content on the NeoPixel canvas. And that's exactly the same thing that we see on our Pimoroni display. Which means that we can now simulate this display inside Wokwe and that should speed up the development process. I think it's time to display a custom image and to display a custom image, we need to draw the image first. For that, I will be using Photopy, which is a free online graphic editor similar to Photoshop. I will create a new file in the size of our display, which is 7 by 11 pixels. Set the background color to black and create the image. Now, obviously, this image is very tiny, so I'll zoom in as much as I can. Then create a new layer by clicking this icon. Right click the brush tool and select the pencil tool. Make sure to set the size to only one pixel. And we can start drawing our image. And I think that I will draw something like number three. For example, like this. Now, since those LEDs are placed on the 45 degree angle, it kind of looks nice if you use those diagonal lines in your design. This image only uses black and white colors, but we can also display grayscale values. And for that, I will lower the opacity of the pencil tool to, for example, only 20% and start filling other pixels, for example, like those corners, maybe like so. And I can also select the eraser tool, set the mode to pencil tool to only one pixel, lower the opacity to also maybe 20% or so and start fading out some pixels, like maybe those corner pixels as well. And I think that something like this looks nice. We need to convert this image into the C style array, but I cannot use the tool that I usually use, which is the image to CPP because it only supports monochrome bitmaps. So this time I will be using this tool, which is called image converter. And in here I can select from a quite a few different color formats. Now I only need 8 bit colors, but I'm a little bit worried that if I select the indexed 8 bit, the colors will be in a different order. So for this reason, I will select the alpha 8 bit and make sure to export the image in a way that the alpha channel is changing. Because right now, if I take a look at the alpha values, they are all the same for all those pixels. But I think that what I need to do is to just hide the background layer. And now the background has the alpha of zero being fully transparent. Most of the pixels are fully opaque, having the alpha of 255. And some of them has the lower alpha value. So I can just go to file, export as PNG image, give it some meaningful name and click the save button. Then select this image in the online converter. So select this image. We want to export this as the C array and click the convert button. And that will create a C file that looks something like this. Now we are only interested in this array. So I'll just copy this array and paste it in our walkway sketch. And instead of all those keywords, I will just say this is the byte array with the name of digit free map. Maybe I'll just rename it to bitmap digit free. And then I want to display it on this NeoPixel matrix. So what I will do is I'll just copy the content of this bitmap digit three into the canvas seven times 11. So before everything else, I will just copy the loop for every pixel. And in here, I will say that the canvas seven times 11 of the index pixel equals 
the bitmap digit 3, also of the index of pixel, and then I will restart the simulation. And somehow it looks quite wrong. But I think what's happening is that we are starting on this pixel on the bottom left corner and we are just going upwards and then jump to the next line and to the next line and so on and so on. So instead of drawing to the canvas sized 7x11 pixel, we are actually drawing to 11x7 pixels. And hopefully I can fix this by going to diagram.json file and set the rows to 11 and columns to 7. And then restart the simulation and now it looks correct. So I just need to stop the simulation and rotate it to this position. Maybe move the wires around a little bit. And now we see the correct result, so let's just try that on the real Arduino. For that let's copy the code and paste it into the Arduino IDE, but we now also have the code for the NeoPixel canvas, so we either have to comment it out, so this NeoPixel and this one and so on, or I have to make sure to install the NeoPixel library, which is this one, Adafruit NeoPixel. I have it installed, so I will just close the libraries. And one more thing that I want to do before uploading it to the Arduino is to make sure that I'm not going all the way to the 255, because it will be super bright on this Pimoroni display. So when I'm setting those pixels using the draw pixel function, I will use the canvas 7 times 11 value, but I will divide it by some value, for example, divide it by 4 to make sure that it will not be that bright. And then upload it, of course, to the Arduino Uno. And in a few seconds, we should see the digit number 3 being displayed on this Pimoroli display. Again, this is 25% of the maximum brightness, and it's still being bright enough. Now I like this image, but I would like to have some kind of animation. And I really like this swirl animation from the Adafruit demo. Those pixels gradually fading in and fading out. However, instead of doing this in the linear transition, maybe we can make it in the form of a circle. And for that, let's actually start with drawing the circle. Back inside Photopea, I will create a new layer and hide the previous one. Then select the gradient tool and change the type to radial. And as for the gradient, let's change it from white to transparent, which is this one. And then just click in the middle and drag it to the corner like so. And that should create a nice looking circle. So I'll just rename this layer to circle, hide the background layer and then export it as a PNG file by going to file, export as PNG file. Let's call this a circle and save it as PNG file. And then same as the last time, let's convert this circle using the image converter utility, selecting the alpha channel to the C code. Then open this file and copy the array and paste it into our walkway sketch up here. And let's just only set it to byte array called bitmap circle. And just to quickly test it inside our main loop, I will set the canvas pixels to be based on this bitmap circle array. So canvas 7 times 11 equals bitmap circle. Let's restart the simulation. And we should see a fading blurred circle. Let's briefly focus on this part of the gradient, because you can see it goes from all black, meaning having the value of 0, to all white having the value of 255. And if I draw it in the form of the graph, it would look something like this going from 0 all the way to the maximum value. So there is a smooth gradient. What I want to do instead is to stay on the 0 for some time, and then suddenly jump to the maximum value, and this position will be determined by some variable. Let's call it for example integer variable offset. Let's set it to 0 for now. And when we are setting the canvas pixels, let's add a very simple if statement saying that if the bitmap circle of the current pixel is lower than the threshold, lower than the offset, in that case the canvas pixel will be 0, otherwise it will be 255. And let's actually set the offset to some different value, for example one in the middle, so this will be like 128, so let's set the offset to be 128 and restart the simulation. And as expected, we only see pixels that are lower than this threshold. So let's animate the offset. I will add a new variable called offset increment and let's just it for example to 10. And inside our main loop, I will say that the offset equals offset plus the offset increment. And if the offset is bigger than some value, for example, let's just say 255. And at the same time, if the offset increment is bigger than zero, we will flip the offset increment by multiplying it by minus one. And we will do the same thing on the other side of the animation. So if the offset is smaller than zero and the offset is smaller than zero, we will also flip the offset increment. Let's restart the simulation and see what happens. And we see a nice animation of the circle getting bigger and smaller. By the way, this is the same as applying the threshold effect inside Photopea. If I would add a new threshold effect, I can animate it in the same way, going from big circle to a small one. And while it looks nice, again, we can show grayscale pixels, but we are not doing that. We are only showing black or white pixels. 
Now this function that we are applying is called a threshold in photo P, but oftentimes this will be called a step function. And there is also a similar function called smooth step function. So let me just draw our graphs one more time. So this is our gradient going from zero all the way to the maximum value. And this was our step function. And the smooth step function is rounding those corners. So it looks something like this. And so in this area, we will see some grayscale values, some grayscale pixels. If I search for the smooth step function code, I see this example on Stack Overflow. So I just copy this code into our sketch and just paste it up here. Now, I'm not quite sure if the clamp is part of Arduino, but I feel that using the constraint function is pretty much the same. So it will constrain the value between zero and one, and that will be our result. Let me draw the graph one last time. So this is our gradient. That will be pretty much the X value, which is this float X. And then the smooth step function looks like this. This will be the first edge. So it will be the edge zero. And this will be the second edge. It will be the edge one. And again, as a result, we will get value between zero and one. So we will have to multiply it by 255 for our pixels. So let's use the smooth step function inside our code. I will comment out this section, which is for the step function. And instead I will create a new float variable called smooth step inner. You will understand why it's called inner in a minute. And let's just use our smooth step function and use our offset minus some value, for example, minus 20 and offset plus inner value, for example, plus 20 as a second edge. So there is some span between those edges and the X value will be our circle. So the bitmap circle of the pixel that will be the X value. And then we will set our canvas to be that variable, but times 255, because again, the smooth step will give us value between zero and one, and we need value between zero and 255. And I will of course round it to the integer value. So let's restart this one more time and see what happens. And it looks like I've typed in too many O's. So only two O's for a smooth step function. So one more restart and we see a nice fading circle. But it may be actually hard to see if I don't pause the simulation. You can see now those grayscale pixels. If you want to have a smoother edge, we can increase the distance between those edges. So for example, instead of using minus 20 and plus 20, we can use minus 100 and plus 100, and it will show much softer edge. Now, if I stop the simulation at a certain time, you will notice that, for example, this edge pixels doesn't go all the way to white color, and the one in the middle doesn't go all the way to the black color either. The fix is simple, we just need to increase the range of the offset animation, not going from 0 to 255, but maybe from 400 to let's say minus 200. And if I do so, you can see it goes all the way to the white color on the edges and all the way to the black color in the middle. And since we haven't tried the sketch on the real Arduino for a while, let's do that. I will copy the code into the clipboard and paste it into the Arduino IDE and just hit the upload button. And we are almost finished with the project, but I still want to do a few more changes. Instead of animating the circle, I want to animate just the outline. And as I do so, as the outline is moving around, I want to also reveal our image of the digit number three. So let's do that one step at a time. First of all, let's see what happens if we switch the edges. So the edge zero will not be minus 100, but it will be plus 100. And edge one will not be plus 100, but minus 100. And for that, I will create a new variable and this time I will call it smooth step outer and use the same smooth step function. But again, the first edge will be plus 100 and the second edge will be minus 100. And then, of course, show it inside our canvas. So smooth step outer times 255. And if I restart the simulation, now the circle is only outside. Now to get the outline, we need to somehow combine the smooth step inner variable together with the smooth step outer variable. And let's draw the graph one last time. Right now we have one smooth step function that looks like this and the second smooth step function that looks like this. And this is not very helpful because, you know, this is not getting anywhere. But what I can do is I can move one of those functions more to the right side. So it will look something like this. And let's delete all functions. So now we have two smooth step functions, which looks like this. Again, this is one and this is zero. And we can multiply those together. So one times zero will be, of course, zero. One times one will be one. And here one times zero will be again zero. And anything in between will look something like this. So this will be our final function and this will be the edge, the outline that we will show. So let's get rid of those drawings and change the code accordingly. We need to move those smooth step functions a little bit and let's actually move both of those. So this will be minus 100, but instead of plus 100, I will set it to minus 5. And the second one will stay to plus 100 and the second edge will be plus 5 instead. So there will be very little spacing between those smooth step functions. 
And then I want to, of course, multiply the smooth step inner together with the smooth step outer function, and that should give us the outline. So let's restart the simulation, and we have a nice animated outline going in and out. Revealing the image, the digit number 3 is quite simple. We just need to combine the image with one of those smooth step functions, and I think that we can use the smooth step inner function. So let me actually just visualize what's going on, just showing the smooth step inner function. This is the circle in the middle, and if we multiply it with our image, the digit number 3, the only visible pixels will be where the circle is visible. So let's create one more float variable and call this reveal image. And for that, I will multiply the smooth step inner with our bitmap digit number 3 pixel. And then of course show it so the canvas will be just the reveal image and if i restart the simulation we see the digit number three appearing and disappearing so as the last step let's combine this image animation together with our outline animation and we can do that simply by saying that the final pixel is the reveal image plus the outline which was previously calculated as the smooth step inner times smooth step outer times 255 but if I do it like this, you see some strange looking pixels during this animation. And that's because we don't want to get over 255. And that's something that we are probably doing because this outer edge could be 255 and the reveal image could be also 255. So we want to constrain the value to only go between 0 and 255. And with this last change, we see a nice animation of the digit number 3 appearing and disappearing. Which means that the only thing left to do at this point is to run it on the real Arduino. So just copy the code into the clipboard, paste it into the Arduino IDE and upload it to the Arduino. And that's it, at least for today, because now we have a nice looking animation running on this Pimoroni 7x11 LED matrix display, which means that the next time I will try to incorporate it into the shifter handle. But for now, that's it. If you have any questions, please put those down in the comment section. All the links and the source files are in the description of this video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.